Good morning. Hey, welcome to our show. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Goose Beardall, and our show is simply called Goose in the Wild. I've had people asking me when we're going to start a new season. We're starting a new season today. And look at this backdrop, man. Is that something else? Beautiful day. It's June 19th, 2007. I got a real special guest today. He's just retired from Westlake. A ton of years of teaching band and music and reading. He's a real good friend of mine, so I'm going to have my good friend come in now. His name is Tom Lewis. He's from Sandy. Welcome, Goose. buddy. Welcome, buddy. Good to be here. Good to be with you. Yeah. First question I'm going to ask you is, All right. how does a guy like you get into this thing called photography? Well, I'll tell you, it's really simple. I like to hunt. I like to fish. I like to be out in the wild. But there are times that it's just slow. You ever had one of those days the fish aren't biting? It's not deer season. You can't do anything. You pick up the camera and you head out to take some shots. Beautiful. Now, my next question is, when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, if we seen one of our buddies, a neighborhood kid carrying a camera, we referred to him as a geek. Let me tell you, a geek. Are you a camera geek? I am absolutely a camera geek. Why is that? Because I love to shoot pictures. And I'll tell you what, sometimes it takes a whole lot more moxie to be a camera geek even than it does to shoot some of the most difficult shots you ever took with a rifle or shotgun. Like this shot right here? Oh, there are some times when you're climbing up and you're shooting a, a mountain goat up on a place like say, that Rocky Ridge up there. Yeah. You shoot a mountain goat on some place like that, that takes a lot of energy, a lot of guts. Now, I know you taught band. Yeah. And those guys are referred to as band geeks, right? Yeah. Right? That's right. What do you think of that? I think I was, I was a band geek, too. And a camera geek? And a camera geek. All right. So as you can see, folks, we got a real good guy here. He's funny. He's got a great sense of humor, and he knows his cameras. Like I said, it's a beautiful day. We just want to let you know where we're shooting our first show in 07, as uh, Carson's going to come right over here, right here. We're at the Pioneer Cemetery on the southeast bench of town. And as I'm reading here, it says it was erected in 1941. And as we can see over there, we got urbanization to the north. We got track cones and front end loaders. And then over here, where we're at filming this first show, we got the old part of history. We've got several people buried here. There's no headstones, but I think this is a great monument. What do you think, Tom? Well, I have a question for you. What's that? Well, this is Goose in the Wild. Uh-huh. I haven't seen any wildlife yet. <laughs> well, guess what? I think we're gonna go right over to the ledge. Okay. And we're gonna sh take a shot of that, aren't we? Okay. So we're not gonna start out all dead here? No. Nope. Okay. Not I'm, all dead. I'm with you. Let's go over and take a picture. Okay guys, we told you we were going to come here and take a shot of this beautiful uh, setting here. But first of all, we want our expert to kind of teach you a little bit about taking the best pictures that you can take. So Tom, what would those essentials be? Okay, we've got three things we need to be concerned with. We need to be concerned with light, focus, and composition. So, Goose, we set up our camera here gotcha. on the tripod. Oh, is that essential? Tripod is the second most important piece of equipment. Well, what's the most important? The camera. Well, we've got to have the camera. Okay. That's a dumb that, question, isn't that, it? That's right. Okay. And today we're shooting film. So we've got it set up, and we've got, I've set it so that the light and everything is all ready to go. Goose, you're going to shoot the first shot. Oh, am I? Yeah, take a look through that lens and see what you think. Okay. It'll look a little blurry to you, and that's okay. Okay, it does. All right composition okay? Do you like the way we've got the road coming off the side of the picture there? I do. Okay, and we've got Mount Nebo in the background? That uh, looks good. Okay, then what you do is you stand up away from the camera. Okay. And we push this little lever down right there. Right. That shuts off the, the uh, viewfinder and you push that button and step back. Push this button right, right there. Right there. And step back. 
Now, there was a two second delay. Yeah. Now, why did I have that on? Well, very simple. The two second delay gives the camera a chance to stop moving from any jostling that you may have done to it when you were getting ready to shoot your shot. Oh, that's why I step back? That's why you step back. Oh, okay. And that's why we close this off so that we don't get any extra light going through that viewfinder that we don't want. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So we got our first shot. Beautiful. Okay. Hey, welcome back, folks. We're in another great setting. As you can see, we got the blue sky, we got the sunlight, and we got the shade. So that's why I've kind of took the shades and put them up on top of my head. We're gonna talk about two more techniques of good picture taking, right? First one, we're gonna have Tom talk about backlighting. Okay, it's all yours. All right, now, it, as you're shooting pictures, you're always concerned where the sun is. Well, most of the time you want the sun behind you, but occasionally you're gonna have the sun behind your subject. That's called backlighting. And that's a difficult thing to photograph. So what we've done here is we're backlighting the water down there on the river with the sun, but then we're going to go uh, uh, use the trees to shade the sun with. So that's how we handle the backlighting in this situation. It. No, nope, uh, I'm filming you. You can tell this is live, can't you? <laughs> okay. All right. And so the next technique you're going to talk about is spot metering. Uh -huh. Boy, those are terms I've never heard. Okay. Well, spot metering uh, means that you've got two different, very different qualities of lighting in this picture. Again, if you look back here at the river and off to the right of our photo, We've got some bright light, and yet off to the left of the photo, if you take a look at that, we've got some really dark uh, shade. So how do we do that? Well, we take metering readings in each of those areas, and then we hit a medium that's gonna give us the most uh, complete depth of field and the, and the most complete lighting for what we're trying to shoot. And that will turn out to be the most brilliant photograph. It will, except for one thing, Goose. What's that? I haven't seen any wildlife in this picture yet. Well, what can I say? We're still looking. Okay. We're still looking All for right. some wildlife. All right, but we'll shoot a great scenery shot here. <laughs> okay, folks, we've done our lighting. We've got the metering and the settings all set. We're ready to take a picture now, aren't we, Tom? Absolutely. Let's shoot this one. All right. Close that. Close this one. Right there. Push the button. All right. Two second delay. Two second delay. Oh, I don't even have to look, do no, I? Don't even have to look. Step back. Do another one. All right. What we're doing here is we're bracketing. We take three shots in a row. So we bracket. The center shot is probably our primary shot, and we bracket with one on either side. Okay. Ooh, that wasn't too tough. A piece of cake. With the pro here. Well. Yeah, but no wildlife. No wildlife. But that's okay, we're gonna find some. We're gonna keep looking, baby. <laughs> All right, folks, we're gonna continue to educate you, inform you on photography. And I've noticed today, Tom, it's a hot day. I put my shades back on. We're in a tough, hot spot right here. I know you're wearing this vest. It kind of looks geeky, but is it functional? Oh, absolutely. This is this is one of the essential pieces of equipment for any photographer. So what do you got for the folks here? Can you instruct right. them right here? You bet. See, these, these little pockets, you carry your spare lenses for different, uh, different applications that you might have. That's a 50 mil lens. Actually, that was a 100 mil. Here's the 50 mil lens. Put that one back in there. Uh, down here, we've got... These are our filters. Filters. That's right. We use those to get different lighting effects. 
Now, today we haven't done anything that requires a filter, so we've left those in the pocket. But if you want a filter, it's, all, it's right there in your pocket. All you gotta do is reach down and get it when you're ready. Gotcha. Then, if you want to use a telephoto lens for something, then you got your telephoto lens, your big long old telephoto over here. But we haven't changed lenses today. Nope. Why is that? The reason for that is very simple. 99% of the time, you're going to use two lenses. And they are? The 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter. Uh, this is the 50 millimeter lens right here. All right, so what did we use on the river? We've used nothing but the 35 millimeter lens today. That's the only one we've had any real need for. All right, so in our third stop here today, we're sticking with the 35. And we've got a unique shot right here. Right. Now, let's talk for just a second about zoom lenses. Some people might say, well, why don't you just bag all those lenses that you're, you're, you're carrying around in your vest and just use one zoom lens? Well, the problem with still photography and zoom lenses is that the zoom lens has twice as much glass in it or more than a single focal length lens. These are all single focal length. They just shoot one, one length. Uh, when you get that much glass, you're inviting problems of distortion in your photography. That and makes, so, if you're shooting, sense. if you're shooting serious outdoor photography, drag your vest along, carry a couple of lenses, and shoot single focal length. Okay. Now we're doing a different kind of photography here. Now down on the river, we did nature shooting. Right. Now here, what are we going to do? We're going to do, uh, we're going to do some architectural, structural photography oh. here. And when you look at this shot, you're going to see that we've used the backhoe as a frame and we framed our picture beautifully this whoever parked it here parked it i think just for us today that's right they must have done that they must have known we were coming but we better get this right because my brother-in-law runs a track hole this is not a back hole oh this is a track hole oh a track hole oh man i you're not going to hit me i i wouldn't want him uh, uh being embarrassed by okay. us calling this a a back hole it's a track hole track hole okay well that's what I get for wearing a Braves hat. No, that's right. You don't even, you don't even like my Braves hat. I know. Hat. Okay. Atlanta Braves. Alright, so I'm going to look through here and I'm going to see that I've got the whole silo, the smaller silos, part of the shed with the trucks in it, and it's all framed beautifully with by, the arm right here. By the track hole, right? right. By the okay. track hole. Okay. And so I think this is a perfect setting for this particular picture of Absolutely. the old rolling mills. Silo. Right. Okay. Well, now we've set our, our readings. We've got our aperture setting. Oh, aperture. I've heard that term before. That's right. That's the opening in the lens. Mm -hmm. And we've set the speed. Now, now it's the A word. It's not attitude, Dude. coach. I know that's what you teach the kids, but this is A for aperture. Aperture. Okay. So we set, we set the aperture and we've set our film speed. How fast we want that, how long we want that aperture to be open. And it's all ready to go. We close that off. You ready? Go ahead. You're going to take the picture. Close off the uh, the lens there. Okay. 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 Hit the button. Oh, well, you have to look. Two second delay. Do it again. Okay. Right. One more One time. One more. You know, that's pretty neat. The tripod. Mm -hmm. You know, folks, we've stopped uh, three settings today and we've been uh, kind of questioned two out of the three times. And Tom, why is that with a tripod? Uh, people aren't used to photographers who use tripods and they think you're out there taking professional photography that you're going to use for some, some underhanded purpose. Oh, And so they always come in question when you've got a tripod to camera. So they think we're doing shady dealings? Yeah. Okay. But we're not, folks. We're just trying to show you that using tripods is essential. That's right. Maybe the shady dealings are because he's wearing the shades. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, welcome back, folks. We're down here on Main Street, and we've got to talk extra loud because of the uh, road noise. Right now, we're going to talk about two more uh, principles of photography, one being macro, and then the latest invention, technology, 
is called digital. I got this new camera for Father's Day. So, Tommy, we're talking about macro. Okay, what we're doing with macro now, first of all, Goose, here we are on Main Street. Now, I haven't seen any wildlife here, not even a bar. This place is really tame. Wow. But beautiful downtown Spanish Fort, Main Street. And would you believe, here is some outdoor photography right here in front of us that is absolutely gorgeous. You don't beat it. For this kind of stuff, we did change lenses. We put on a macro lens. A macro lens is a lens that will bring the subject up close so you can get within an inch or less with a good macro lens. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna narrow down. We've got some marigolds. We've got some uh, petunias. And we've got some beautiful little greenery here. And we're gonna make a really, really pretty little back uh, background of the, the greenery and the, and the dirt. We're gonna make a great outdoor shot. Now, what if you're not into flowers, though, Tom? Well, if you're not into flowers, how could you be a photography geek? Okay. I feel like a geek now. I got my camera case on. Ah, welcome to the club, man. I don't have my ball, my baseball bag on. I got this uh, camera, camera case. case. That's right. And you got a tripod in your hand. Wow. I don't have a baseball bat, folks. No, just a tripod. All right. Let's go down and take a look at this. Let's shoot this one. done with the rest. I get to shoot these because you're going to shoot with that one. All right. All right. So I've got it ready to go. And again, I did my, my three shot. I can't hear you. A big truck went by. Oh, I'm going to do my three shot brackets. Fortunately, we're not shooting sound except with the video camera. Uh, okay. Yours out. There's my little tripod. Okay. Now you can lengthen that out. Now with yours, uh, let's see. Let's let's talk, let's go out to about there. So, but if you're a short photographer, how do you lengthen your leg? That's why you. That's why you carry your uh, automatic ladder around. Now, automatic ladder. Got a zoom lens here, so you don't need to worry so much about uh, about getting down quite so close. Your zoom lens will take care of that for you. There you go. That's pretty much the same picture we just took. I do the same format. Yep, same thing. Take a look through there.
All right, guys, we're at another location. Can you guess where we're at? Just kind of take a look right there. Look at those three aminals. This is not the Board of Education, I think. <laughs> no, this ain't the Board of Education, Okay, man. I, I'm just making sure. Look at them. Those well, aren't wild animals. <laughs> isn't this a great place to shoot some digital? Oh, yeah. It's per this is a perfect a perfect location for why? digital. Tell our viewers why. Well, here you, here you are, and you can get zoom in and out. You can get nice, clear shots of moving pictures. These guys are moving around the, the stall here. You can zoom in. You can get a nice, sharp, clear picture. This is a perfect uh, place to shoot digital. And notice that we've set up between the two bars so that you're not having the bars in your way. You're just shooting the pictures of the animals that you're trying to photograph. All right. Now, earlier you was telling, uh, you was getting to tell us, uh, Carson and I, about an experience in Nauvoo. Can you briefly tell the folks about that regard in regards to tripods? You know, whenever you set up with a tripod, you have to be prepared for someone who might come along. We've had that happen to us twice, three times today, haven't yep. we? Three times, people might come along and want to know what you're doing. But the other thing that will happen is they'll think you're a pro. I was doing some photography for the city of Nauvoo a few years ago, and I set up some, to take some pictures of some of the historical sites back there, and I noticed that there were some people who were coming along and the, watching exactly what I was doing, and they were setting up, as soon as I'd leave that site, they'd set up and take the exact same picture that I just took. Well, now, to a photographer, that's a little bit rude. So, uh, uh, eventually, I just took a picture of, uh, uh, a piece of grass or something like that and sure enough they came along and just took the same picture that I had just taken. So it's kind of one of those funny experiences that you have when you're uh, when you're out taking pictures with doing it in a serious way with uh, with your tripod and your camera doing the thing you're supposed to. Now you know what I think Goose has left me somewhere here and I'm wondering about the wild photography. We've done digital We've done film. My goodness, we've just had a great time uh, looking at all these things. We've got some great scenery. We've done some wildflowers on Main Street. One more thing I might add, you know, to you guys who are saying, oh, this is all wimpy stuff, uh, try it sometime when you're out and, and just grab your camera and go off uh, on a day that the fishing is slow or whatever, and you're going to have a great experience. Uh, shooting some pictures that you'll look back and say, wow, that was fun. Yeah! Oh, hey! The wildlife is here! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> We're looking for it. We finally found it, folks. We finally found the wildlife. And this is a good way to sign off. Remember, have a great day. And like up at Westlake, what do I say second? We love you. Remember, we love you. And we do. This is Goose, Beard All, and my good buddy, Tom Lewis signing off. See you later.